Hi guys. I just wanted to uh, check in and say hey. And thanks for watching my latest interviews. I'm glad they seem to uh, have been well received. I really enjoyed doing them. I've got another one to post, but I just wanted to sort of check in. I can't believe that summer is over. Where does the time go? Um, so about the interviews, I just, if I recall correctly, had a couple things I wanted to say. Um, it seemed like with the Layla interview, um, people really were, I mean, if anyone took issue with anything in the interviews, it was the uh, quote-unquote generalizations that she made about uh, black people. But I just, um, in her defense, if there needs to be any, which I'm not really sure that there does, but I just wanted to remind people that all of that came about in response to my question of why do you think that white people are so reluctant to embrace, uh, I guess, equality. I don't think that was exactly the way that I put it, but to share the wealth and to let go of this notion of um, white as right anyway. I don't, I don't even know that I think it's a thing of superiority anymore. But anyway, um, so regardless of if those things are true or whatever, I think that's a great response to that question. Also, she said, you know, that she didn't like th this black guy telling her that she was black and going on and on. It was a very similar experience to one that I had had. And at the same time, she didn't say that she hates when Obama says that he's black. She said she hates that everyone else says that. And I think all that she meant by that is that it just makes us feel invisible. At the same time, I think we all understand the situation. I think it's sad that in 2009 we haven't come far enough to recognize a biracial person as, as equal parts of these two things, to have that just be common knowledge and accepted, um, that there still has to be this, oh, one drop and blah, 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 blah. Um, but seeing as that this is the situation that we're in, I, I think it very important that uh, he stand up as a black man. I'm just sorry that that's um, how far behind we are, in my opinion. Of course I don't. I have learned uh, to not try to project my personal identity or thoughts or feelings around that onto someone else. Um, but I also wanted to throw this quote out there and I've read, I don't know, most recently I read that it was F. Scott Fitzgerald who said it, but he said the mark of um, a highly intelligent person is the ability to hold two opposing thoughts. Um, yeah, I'm going to probably have to look at that again and like write it out because that doesn't sound all that great. But I'm just saying she's not stupid, she's not contradictory. Both of those things can be true. Um, they're true for me and I don't think that makes her a hypocrite or uh, anything like that. So. Thank you, Layla. And the Philip interview was great too. And I was so happy that I, I got another male to interview. And I'm hoping, of course, to find more. So, um, yeah, Philip is very cute, but please don't be trying to turn me into a cougar. All right? He is at least 10 years younger than me. So, um, anyway, <laughs> he's a great guy. I loved what he said about whiteness sort of being a political viewpoint and um, blackness sort of being the opposite of that and an oppression that you that makes you stronger. <laughs> but I also I just been thinking a lot about um, another sort of benefit or you know something that I think goes along with blackness being. Um, because we live sort of in the margins, you know, compared, you know, white is right, white is the mainstream, white is normal. Everything's presented to us, for the most part, most things are presented to us from a white perspective as, you know, being sort of center, right? And um, I think a lot of times that doesn't include I see it as including me because I see myself as part of that based on my life experience. 
but I also, um, well, like Susan Laurie Park said in The Blacklist, um, which is so great, again, I will say, if you haven't seen it, both one and two are fantastic, but um, she was talking about how if you're within the margins of the margins, African American women specifically, it's like you kind of, you can slip under the radar and you don't have to necessarily live by the rules because the rules weren't really created for you. They're created to apply to you if you're sort of getting in the way of the mainstream, then the rules apply to you. I hope this is making sense because it, sounding kind of crazy to me right now, but I'm going to keep talking so I can make my point, I hope. Um, so, you know, like if you're breaking the law or something, all of those rules, I think, are applied to hold us back as people of color. But, you know, you, you kind of, you don't take for granted that everything you read is true. You know, not only are the history books not 100% true, but that the vaccinations, the anything that that people are touting, <laughs> um, I don't. I think you take those things with a grain of salt sometimes. I feel like I had a good example of that from my mom. I remember like right off the bat in first or second grade, and we were learning about you know Thanksgiving and uh, the Pilgrims and the Mayflower, and you know I went to this wealthy white private Catholic school and something kept happening where I was made to feel like less than the, the, you know people in my class it was like oh our ancestors came over on the Mayflower and blah 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 and it it was just sort of like I was excluded from the discussion in a way and I'm talking about at the age of like six or seven so it's not like I was really raring to go but as someone who uh, believes and has always been told that I have Cherokee ancestry I was like um, excuse me <laughs> there's a whole other side of this story and I believe that my people were probably here first so you could like stop the bragging and my mom went to the school and like she just was not pleased with the way these lessons were being taught so I think I always knew that there was something that something could always be missing and I think I brought up vaccinations which is a weird thing but I just I mean I, I hope everyone questions certain vaccinations like swine flu and stuff I don't know I don't I just you know don't believe the hype kind of thing and I think if you're white like the hype is for you the hype works for you for the most part so you might you know, buy into some things that aren't necessarily true. And I think that is something about blackness. It makes you question this quo and perhaps lead, like, leads you to a greater truth than you might find has been prescribed for the country, if that makes any sense at all. Um, and since I brought up Susan Lori Parks and the blacklist, there's also something she says about, she wrote this play called Top Dog, Underdog, and I think it won uh, a Pulitzer, and uh, Most Deaf was in it. I didn't see it, unfortunately, but anyway, she was talking about how a lot of young African Americans came to see the show and had not been to much theater. She didn't say this, but I'm gonna say, it, except maybe like outside of the Chitlin circuit. and. Um, you know, they came an hour late and they were talking on the phone, but they were also like talking to, you know, participating sort of in, in the show. It was like, you know, the fourth wall wasn't there. And instead of being like, and that was so disruptive, or, you know, we must teach them better than that. She's like, this is who we are. This is a rich part of our culture and we have to mine those riches and remember who we are. And, and I, um, you know, this is something I saw a year ago this was in the first blacklist and it really stuck with me because I know that there was a time where something like that would have embarrassed me or that I would have been very judgmental about um, and I think just my mom coming out of the arts was always like we respect the arts and we are quiet and we do not speak and you do not open a piece of candy and if you can help it don't cough you know like we give our undivided attention to this um, you know actually even if it was a movie but especially if it was a live performance and so for me, I used to think that that was just, you know, classless or um, 
rude to say the least. Um, but now I, I don't think that anymore. I think that's a beautiful thing. And I it just something, you know, you just change your perception of a thing like that um, easily, I think. Anyway, I hope everybody had a good summer. I hope you liked the interview that I'm about to post in the next couple of days. And thank you for all of the support that I've been receiving. It, I can't tell you how much it means to me. Really, really priceless. So thank you, thank you, thank you.